now it's Tammy with Real Southern Woman. Finally, I'm alone. And I've had a few uh, minutes to be alone with God, which is good. Um, I've missed being alone with God. Um, you know, now that Chris has retired, we stay up late. I've always been an early to bed, an early to rise kind of person. And normally I would get up real early in the morning. And I was talking my, with my brother about this earlier tonight. Um, I used to get up earlier and um, spend a little time alone in the morning with just me and and the Lord if I chose of course and uh, now that Chris is retired we stay up late we stay up until uh, sometimes 12 to 2 and um, I don't really get up early like I used to I usually get up around 8 or 9 and as soon as I'm up Chris is up and um, I'll have to say that I don't have a lot of a long time and um, I've got to, I really need to work on that. And uh, he and I really probably need to talk about it. But normally I do get some alone time when he goes to work out. But we've been on vacation this week. I guess you could call it a vacation, a getaway time. We've been together every day. And today I had a migraine. And the winds are high. So it wasn't a good time to go out on the boat. And I told him him to go ahead and go fishing and I thought when I said it oh I'll finally be alone and not that I don't want to be with my husband at all but it's really good for us to be alone we need some time to think things through um, and some time alone to be with God if we don't take the time out uh, to think you know to be alone with God then we miss out and of course if, you know I do talk to him when I go to sleep or whatever when I'm laying in the bed but it's still nice to have a minute to look in the Word and study. Um, I have not been on here a lot with Bible study, and I'm hoping that most of the chaos is over. Mama is holding her own and staying pretty steady uh, with her health. My sister is in town, and um, so that has given me a chance to go and uh, get a breather. So that has been nice this week. We have had a total blast on the boat. But I was reading um, on our, in our um, Bible study for the day. And there was just a couple of things I was going to talk to you all about. Um, and then we might talk about some other stuff. But, you know, I have been looking at, let me open this on my Kindle. Um, this is Jesus, Our Perfect Hope by Charles Stanley. And today is May the 8th, and I actually read this last night before I went to sleep, and it's called Make the Decision. Now, um, it says Make the Decision, and I'll read the study for y'all that I'm going to talk a little bit about what it means to uh, make a decision, okay? And um, and we'll we'll talk about that. How's that? So it says, make a decision, and this is good for me, and it's probably good for you, and it's probably good for anybody if they think about different times in their life or different things in their life that they can make a decision on. But it says, make a decision. I am the Lord your God who upholds your right hand, who says to you, do not fear, I will help you. This comes out of Isaiah 41, 13, and Isaiah is a chapter that, is a prophecy chapter so it's kind of wild you know and has a lot of deep meanings and that kind of thing so when a Bible study brings something out of a chapter like that I kind of like to look at it I am a firm believer and not picking up one verse and going anywhere with it I believe you should study where it's from what it's talking about uh, the context of the verse in other words so I don't just like to get a verse and just come to a conclusion on one verse and that's just how I am. Now, it says, after he tells us to make this decision, he says, today make a decision that you're going to trust God. And this is not, of course, talking about, just talking about trusting God as your personal Savior, which I hope that you have done. But this is talking about trusting God with different things in your life, okay? Decisions that you have to make. So it says, Today, make the decision that you're going to trust God. It says, choose not to be fearful of whatever challenges arise 
or trouble confronts you. Now, I have been confronted with trouble lately, and um, I will be honest with you. Lots of times, and I'm no different than you, and you may not, you may be more in a different place than I'm at spiritually or whatever. But um, lots of times when we get so busy and overwhelmed, we do not take our time out to look in the Word of God or to study His Word. Uh, and it does put us under more stress when we do that. And that's kind of where I've been the last couple of weeks. It's one reason I wanted to get away and come down here. Now, um, it says, choose not to be fearful of the challenges or the trouble. It says this may seem difficult because of the emotions you are experiencing. True, very true, right? It says, but you can do it by focusing on the reality that your Savior is with you. He is your sustainer, your protector, your provider, and preserver of your life. He is always loving and willing to forgive you of your sin. He ensures that you are eternally secure in Him. Now, since we know we're eternally secure in Him, no matter what happens in our life, we have a hope that other people may or may not have. And we also know that um, his desire is always good for us. And that's our next thing he says. He says, the Lord's desire for you is always good. So you can be certain that whatever he allows to touch your life will lead to some important and eternal benefit. Okay, so do it. Make the choice you have faith in God. It says, so do it. Make the choice to have faith in God who loves you, provides for you, cares for you, and is always available to you and is in control of your life at all times. That just brought to mind, you know, he's always available. So, Really, we ought to fall to our knees when we're in situations where we're overwhelmed because he's always available. Doesn't matter if we're in the bed, in the shower, riding down the road, wherever we are, he's available. Um, it says, and it is, he is in control of your life at all times. And voice your decision to trust him with prayer, praise, thanksgiving, and worship. Because as you do, I have no doubt that your Savior will melt away any fears you have and fill you with wonderful peace that transcends understanding. Uh, at the end of his Bible study, this is, it says, Jesus, I trust you. Thank you for being my Savior, sustainer, protector, provider, and the love of my life. Amen. <clears throat> I'm a horse every time I have to take. I take Imatrex. It's Sumatriptan. I know this is off the subject, but um, Sumatriptan Imatrex is a, uh, a medication for migraines. It is not a pain medication. It is a medication that actually goes in, and um, I, I'm pretty sure it thins your blood and helps your blood flow through the uh, blood vessels and stuff and, and relieves the migraine. So it's not something that makes you high or it's a pain med. It is more get to the root of the cause and let's solve the problem but every time i take one y'all get so hoarse um it causes me to be hoarse so i uh, just thought i'd throw that in there so i feel like i'm really hoarse i'm gonna drink it some water i was talking to my oh i'm getting off the subject let me finish my bible study and then we'll talk about personal stuff living water that's jesus christ right Think of that when you drink your water. What would we do without water? And wouldn't we just dry up and wither away? And so we need his living water too. That just came to my mind. Um, now, I am going to talk a little bit about this and touch a couple of things. In Isaiah 41, 13, when you read the scripture, um, I studied it just a little bit, but... It said, he asks us to, um, this Bible study is talking about making a decision. Now, if you look up decision in the regular dictionary, it says a conclusion, a resolution reached after consideration. 
So instead of really getting into the scripture part of this Bible study, because it is out of a prophetic book, which doesn't really, it's, you could say it pertains and it does in a roundabout way, but it's really deep. So I don't want to go there. So I thought we'll take, if we're going to make a decision, what do we have to do? And it says it's a re resolution that's reached after consideration. So I thought what better way to study what we should consider than to look up, that's what I like about Blue Letter Bible, is I can go in Blue Letter Bible, and I'm using the King James Version, I go up to the top, and I type in the word consider. Now, when I type in the word consider, it is going to bring up every time it's used in the Bible. And it says it occurs 67 times in 66 verses in the King James Version. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because I want to see what God had to say about consideration since we're supposed to make a decision to trust in Him with our life. So I thought, what a better way to look at it than to do it this way. So it says, I'm just going to touch real quickly um, some of the things it says to consider or He says to consider, okay? Um, and I'm not going to read every verse. I can't read 67 verses, so I'm just going to touch it. We're going to say, you know, just consider what? What are we considering? Okay. What does he talk about considering in the Word of God? It says, consider that, the, consider that this nation is thy people. Consider the years of many generations. Um, consider what ye have to do. Consider what thou wilt do. Um, when I consider, I am afraid of him. Consider any of his ways. Consider the wondrous works of God. Consider and hear me. O oh Lord, my God, lighten me. Lighten mine eyes. Least I sleep and the sleep of death. That sounds pretty deep, doesn't it? That's a psalm. Okay. Um, consider her palaces. Consider this. Consider his doing. Consider thy testimonies. Consider diligently. Consider it. So, I mean, he just says it over and he uses that word over and over and over in the word of God. So there is a lot of considering done. He asks us to consider a lot of things. He questions why we're not considering things. Um, and if you'll, if you want to just type it in Blue Letter Bible, you'll see that sometimes he'll, he'll kind of like he'll tell people they're making mistakes because they're not considering. Now, that's a good point because we're supposed to be making a decision. And our life is full of decisions. Every day when we get up, we make decisions. So do we consider before we make a decision? Do we consider God in our situation? Do we consider his word? Do we consider the things that he's shown us in his word so that we don't have to learn something the hard way, etc.? So I just thought that was something to think on today. I um, thought it was really interesting that God does make a big deal out of considering things and our decision making, right? So I know um, that he's here for uh, for me and you, and I know that he wants us to consider before we make decisions. Most everything I've ever gotten in trouble for, it's because I made a bad decision. <laughs> Lots of times when we make decisions that are bad, they're out of God's will. And you say, a lot of people are searching, what is God's will for me? What is God's will for my life? Who knows what God's will is? i tell you what his will is more than anything, is that you love him. That you love others as much as you love yourself. And that you're not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that you'll share the good news. I mean, if we could just do a few things, then it makes a big difference in whether or not we're in God's will. And we should ask him to help us make decisions. Um, and that way we don't wind up in a mess. You know, 
Anyway, I don't know. Y'all might think that's discouraging or encouraging. I have no idea. It's encouraging to me. Um, I haven't made any crazy decisions lately. Um, just been going through things in my life that all of us go through. All of us go through um, emotional times in our life when we may be uh, have someone that's sick in our life, just like with my mom. I mean, for goodness sakes, almost 10 years ago, it was me with cancer. And I'm sure Chris was going through uh, things that I never even dreamed of going through because when I had cancer, I was so content. I really was. And being with God and if I lived, I lived. And if I died, I knew I was going to be in a wonderful place because I had a good husband and I didn't have to worry about my kids. And I'll be real with y'all. I really was content with my cancer and trusting God. Um, and a lot of people can't say that. And they're scared and they're afraid. And um, But I was very content because I know he's real and I know he has a place for me. Um, and I know his will is going to be what happens, and I know he has a plan. So I trusted him. Um, anyway, let me get a drink of water. I was talking with that. I guess that's enough uh, talking about the Lord today. But I could I could talk about the Lord all day, but I know a lot of people can't. I thought it was funny the other day. When I was um, singing that song on my birthday, Chris said, you know, Tammy, a lot of those older women, they watch you and they're not going to like that new music. And I said, well, I don't care. I mean, just because y'all like me doesn't mean you have to agree with everything I do. And I was thinking about that today, too. Like, I've had people that like my show and like me go on, and if they hear that I'm a Republican, they won't watch me anymore. They never message me again. I think that's the craziest thing. I mean, for heaven's sakes, I love you if you're a Republican or if you're a Democrat or if you're a sinner or if you're a saint. We should love each other regardless, especially if we're Christians. We shouldn't hold anything against each other like that. It's crazy. With that said, let me just say this about the music. There was a time in my husband's life when he was so straight and narrow with religion is what it was, Baptist religion, that he didn't want me listening to the uh, Christian music on the radio unless it was gospel. Um, and he was real funny about a lot of things he did. But when I look back, at the way he was then, do you know that even if I thought he was saved, he really wasn't? Now, I'm not saying that if you don't like this modern music, you're not saved. That's not what I'm saying. I'm telling you with our experience as a couple, when my husband cared more about me going to church, like he used to make my kids go to church, he would get mad if I kept them out of church even if they had a fever. Goofy. You know, because um, he said it was, you know, got to be faithful. And uh, but let me just say, um, if you're a mama and your kid is sick with a fever, God knows your kid is sick with a fever. And the last thing you need to do is take it to church and give it to all those people, especially the elderly people in there. They don't need a fever. They don't need the flu. They don't need a stomach bug. I mean, for heaven's sakes, keep the kid at home. And quit spreading the germs. God knows. Another thing is, God knows a lot, you know. And so we can't impress men and expect him to be happy about it. So a lot of these things we do, as far as stuff like that, to me, is to, to impress the people at church instead of our Lord God. Personally, that's where I'm at. And I'm probably rubbing some of y'all wrong, but I don't care. But let me just say this. Somebody said to me on one of my comments about that song that it had no place in a Christian's life and that nobody was so spiritual that they could think about God and listen to music like that. And I thought, are you kidding me? And that just to me makes them seem very unspiritual. And let me say why. 
Do you think if you're a Christian and you listen to the old church hymnal songs, because most of them that are going to say something like that, that's what they listen to. Do you think that people over in Africa that are singing and praising the Lord with their type of music, that it's sinful or that they can't think on the Lord with their type of music? Give me a break. So what I'm trying to say is we can think on the Lord no matter where we are. No matter what we're singing, no matter what kind of tune it is, as long as our mind and our heart's in the right place, that's all that matters. And the only person that knows that is you and God. And it's and now and don't throw out that verse, judge not, lest you be judged, because if you study the word of God, it is okay to judge somebody, believe it or not. We're gonna come back and judge people one day if we're born again Christians. Now, I'm not saying you should walk around judge in judgment of everybody, but I'm just saying that as a Christian, you should know, you should be able to judge. But don't judge from what you've heard or from what you've been told by your granny or your granddaddy or a preacher. Judge by what the Word of God says. And the Word of God doesn't say anything about music, doesn't say anything about what kind of music we should listen to. So be real careful um, what you say to people and what you think. And just because you don't want to hear that kind of music don't mean that other people don't. Let me tell you something. If my kid, I know my kids are not going to sit around. And if you tell me you're stu, then there's something wrong with them. If a teenager sits around and just glories in church, uh, old-time gospel and that's all they ever listen to. And they act like they, I mean, I, it would just be hard for me to believe that they liked it unless they were a little slow in the head or something at that age. Uh, Y'all get mad at me if you want to. My husband probably made me take this off. But that's just crazy. I mean, for heaven's sakes, like, like kids in their late teens and early 20s are going to walk around and that's all they're going to listen to and all they're going to sing. So I just think that Open up your mind a little. I'd much rather my kids, my kids don't even listen to the the modern Christian music. I'd give anything if they listen to modern Christian music instead of the stuff that's on the regular radio. I think it would be a true blessing. And so um, maybe we should pray about that, you know. And if you are, are, are of that old school to where you just really believe it's sinful or you really believe this or you really believe that, uh, maybe you should talk to God about it and ask him, you know, to show you why. you. Th I mean, if you think it's sinful, then try to find in the Word of God why it's sinful. Now, if it makes you think of bad things, that's your heart, not somebody else's, okay? Um, one, of the, one of my favorite modern songs that I love to think of Jesus when I listen to is You've Got a Friend. And let's see, uh, I guess we could end our lesson listening to the song. And I know I'm not supposed to listen to songs on here. So we will do a, uh, you can listen to a song if you do a, um, what do you call it? They call it something. Like you're supposed to re be reviewing the song. Um, so it's, uh, you've, y'all, I don't, I don't never remember, got a friend. I don't ever remember who sings anything, so it would be terrible. I would be like Chris knows who sings everything. What year it was sung? Okay, James Taylor. James Taylor sings "You've Got a Friend." Now, when he wrote this song, I've never read about the song to see what it was truly about what the background was on who wrote it or anything like that. All I know is every time I hear it, all I can think of is Jesus Christ. Now, for if you're listening, whoever told me that on my last video, if you think that nobody could be that spiritual, then listen to the song and see, just think about Jesus. 
and see what you think about this song with Jesus as your friend. Okay. Um, it says, well, I, I guess I could just um, read the words and that way I won't get a copyright. How's that? says, when you're down and troubled and you need a helping hand and nothing, oh, nothing is going right. Just close your eyes and think of me and soon I will be there to brighten up even your darkest night. Jesus, y'all, it's Jesus. You just call out my name, and you know wherever I am, I'll come running to see you again. Winter, spring, summer, or fall, all you've got to do is call, and I'll be there. You've got a friend. If the sky above you should turn dark and full of clouds, and that old north wind should begin to show, blow, I mean, if the sky above you should turn dark and full of clouds and that old north wind should begin to blow, keep your head together and call my name out loud. Soon I'll be knocking upon your door. You just call out my name and you know wherever I am. I'll come running. Oh, yes, I will to see you again. Winter, spring, summer, or fall, all you've got to do is call, and I'll be there. Ain't it good to know that you've got a friend when people can be so cold? They'll hurt you and desert you. Well, they'll take your soul if you let them. Oh, but don't you let them. You just call out my name. And you know, wherever I am, I'll come running to see you again. That's beautiful, y'all. Absolutely beautiful. Take your smartphone. Look up that song. You've got a friend. And it's James Taylor. Listen to it. Close your eyes and think of Jesus. Now, like I said, I've never read to see anything about that song. Um, I kind of doubt it was written about Jesus. <laughs> but I can guarantee you one thing. That's who I think of when I listen to it. And if you think that somebody could never be spiritual enough to listen to modern music and think on Jesus, then you're wrong. Because if Jesus is in your heart and Jesus is on your mind, you can think on him even listening to songs like this. Um, I challenge you tonight to listen to that song and just think on Jesus because I'm going to tell you, nobody ever can compare to Jesus as a friend. Nobody can ever compare to the agape love of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord for Jesus Christ. And praise the Lord for the hope we have in Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord for the time I've got to spend with Jesus Christ this week and get away from everything. Um, Y'all keep us in your prayers. I am not mourning because my mother will be going home to be with Jesus. I'm ready, and y'all can think I'm ugly if you want to. I'm ready for my mother to go home and be with Jesus because she's suffered long enough. She's very uncomfortable. She's not doing well and and i'll be very happy to see her leave this world and be in that beautiful glorious world with her lord and savior jesus christ um i hope and pray that y'all have a good night i hope and pray and y'all pray for me um too that maybe i can come and spend more time with y'all um lately i have got quite a few things done we have been working on um, links to our Amazon kitchen links all day. I hired a guy to do a new website, but there was some loose ends that I had to fix, and 
it's hard because I have to go in and figure it out myself. And the, um, the, the way that that page, the way that the website is made is very, it is not user friendly at all. So it's taken me a while to figure everything out, figure out how to list it because I have to figure out, it's just too complicated for me to send the sky, all of those links. And it's, it's a lot of hard work, y'all. And I hope that y'all appreciate it. And y'all go and browse when I'm done. But I, I wanted it to be so that y'all could click on it and it be fast. Bring up the links quickly. I wanted it to, uh, you to be able to see it on your smartphone and not just the tablet or the computer. So the interface is, is complicated. And I've been working on that for two days now. And I think I'm pretty close to being done. Um, you can go take a look, but remember that I'm not quite finished. I still want to do a page on, uh, nothing but stuff for cakes. I still got to do, uh, redo my beauty links and in like care links. Um, my wish list is not, not really in the right format because I figured out how to do a better format today. But all the other lists are on there. I've got a list now for um, electronic, you know, like appliance type things. Uh, one for just kitchen gadgets, things I don't want to live without. Uh, one that's for utensils. One that's for cookware and things that go along with your cookware. And I can't even remember them all, but I've split them up. So that, let's say you're looking for my blending fork. Uh, you don't have to look through all the cookware to get to the blending fork. Does that make sense? I hope it does for y'all. So I hope that y'all uh, go take a look at it. Um, and the blending fork is first on the, I think it's the first thing now on the click. I tried to make some of them a little more convenient uh, for the things that we seem to sell the most through Amazon. Now, you know it's not my store. Um, and I'm not affiliated with any of these people to sell you anything. Nobody. The only thing is, is that Amazon does give me a very small percentage when you shop through my link. Is all it is. So it's not like I'm making a killing or anything. But it sure is helpful for me because so many people watch my videos. And they want to know where I got something or what the name of it is. And it's so much easier to say. Go to ColoredBellyCooks.com and click on Kitchen Links that it is to try to describe to every person uh, what they're looking for. Um, it's so quiet in here. Do y'all know this trailer is the noisiest little thing? Because you know there's no insulation much in a trailer. This is a trailer. I think it's a 90-something trailer, I want to say. Um, it's a single wide. And so right when I first started to do my Bible study, I had the wash machine on and it was spinning and a bumping and I'm making all this racket and then the next thing you know the fan was on and I knew it would interfere with the the sound and then the, uh, the and then that mechanical system came on and started blowing and it was really loud and I know I'm loud but um I was thinking good lord you know like when you're in a big house at home not that I live in a mansion but I have our house is about a little under 1,700 square feet. But when you live in a house, it's just not quite as noisy as this trailer, okay? Um, and we're going to live here in a couple... And next year, we're going to retire here. We're going to live in this little trailer. We got, we're going to have to sell just about everything we have and come down here. But I am going to remodel this kitchen, which will be a lots of fun. And, um, and yes, will we be tempted to take our money and try to buy another house. Of course we will, but we're not because we got two girls in college. It costs a fortune to go to college. I don't know if any of y'all know it or not, but it costs a whole lot of money to go to college. May's uh, yearly tuition is $49,000. She has to live on campus. That includes her room, board, and meal plan. Uh, and tuition, no books. And the highest you can get from the college is a 20000 scholarship. And she got the 18, so her grades were good. Um, so um, that helps a lot. And then her papa, he's going to have four kids in college after this year. He's got 
Wait a minute. I'm saying that wrong. He has got three kids. He's got May and Will, which is my brother's son. He lives in Collar Valley, Will Benefield. Um, he's got my May, and then he's got my sister's JoJo. And they all graduate this year, and so he'll have all three kids in college. So he maxes it out at ten thousand per kid per year, which is a blessing, and I'm and I'm thankful for it. Believe me. And then when Amy starts the following year, he'll have five in college, no four in college. And then when Gracie starts, which is Will's little sister, starts the following the following year after that, he'll have five kids in college. Um, so he's got a lot going on. It's weird. My older brother had his kids young. And so they graduated, um, let's see, they were born in like 1987, 88, let's say 87 and 89, because I graduated high school in 87. Barry was having kids when I graduated high school. He's seven years older than us, the three younger kids in my family. So all of us not only didn't, we didn't have kids in our teens, or early 20s, we waited till we were in our 30s before we started having kids, practically. My sister had her first at age 26. I had my first at age 31. And Eddie had his first, I believe. Will would have been there first. So Eddie would have been 29. So uh, Daddy just had it made for quite a few years in between. And, and uh, well, I take that back. Destiny, my sister's daughter, uh, just finished college a few years ago. So she was kind of like the little floater in between, which was real easy for daddy to help. But boy, is he going to have a time with everybody's in college. He'll probably be under a lot of stress. Um, so y'all pray for my daddy too. Um, I hope that y'all have a um, blessed night. I could just sit here and talk to y'all all night long. It's terrible that I like to hear myself talk enough that I could talk to y'all forever. And it's not just that. I know that y'all are on the other side. And it really is. Like, some some of my family and different people probably think I'm a little bit weird, you know, because they probably think, those people aren't real on the other side of that thing. But they don't realize it. But I know y'all are real. I know y'all are here. I know you love me. I know you pray for me. You know I pray for you. I do. I pray for y'all. Um, and I know that you're real and you're real people. And the cool thing about social media like this is it's just like you're sitting here with me. If y'all weren't in here with me, Chris would be in here with, you know what I mean? It's no different. It's pretty cool. And I, I like to see, and sometimes I look at y'all's comments and sometimes I don't. Like I could look at it tonight and then split it up into two and put it on YouTube. Because YouTube, um, I don't, most of the time I'm always live on Facebook. And I just copy it and put it on YouTube. And I don't have enough followers on my Bible study, Real Southern Woman, to worry too much about making money on YouTube, you know. Because not many people want to talk about God. Uh, Y'all are special. Uh, let's see. Betty, let's see who we got here tonight. We got Linda Taylor. James, she's probably kin to James Taylor. <laughs> Kamisha, she makes some good looking food all the time. Uh... Now, if I say your wrong, name wrong, I'm sorry. Diane, let's see, it looks like, it looks like Diana with a J on the end. So, I don't know if she says Diana or, I don't know. Maybe you could spell it out little syllables with dashes in between so I'd know how to say your name. But she's watching. Uh, Sandra Miller says, I agree, my trailer is noisy, but it's home. It sure is home. You know what I like about living in a trailer, Sandra, is um, when Chris left a while ago, I had this migraine. And I got up and I started just piddling around and I put a load of clothes in the wash and I came in here and I cleaned my kitchen. And I thought to myself, if all I had was this trailer to take care of, sure would be easier. It's so much simpler. I think that older people, I don't know why, this is this is uh, our lesson for tomorrow. I should do one tomorrow. It's about being content, okay? And I don't know why, but all of us here in America, we're, we're vain and we like a lot of things and pretty things and big things and big houses and big yards and big, you know, and uh, like my best friend, she's been looking for a house to downsize 
And for several weeks, she just really got off her trail and was looking at houses too big. But you know real estate agents do you that way. And I, I finally just grabbed her. I really did. I just grabbed her by her shirt. And I went, what is wrong with you? You know, you're supposed to be downsizing and getting ready to retire. Not getting something big and extravagant, something to take care of. She's a single woman. Do you know that every every house in my subdivision, truly, that is unkept maintenance-wise, is a single woman? And I ain't trying to make y'all mad or not, because a lot of y'all probably seen women. I'm just saying, get real. Own up to it. When you're single and you're an older woman, you don't have the time nor the energy or feel like keeping up some big place. Uh, so anyway, I talked her into buying a house that was smaller than the one she had. It's bigger than the one I have still, but at least she downsized a little bit. And it's all one level, so she don't have a big yard and she don't have a basement in an upstairs anymore, which is good. So anyway, with that said, we need to learn to be content. If y'all have ever know, oh, I'll tell y'all that tomorrow because it's a different study. Um, Betty Gooden is watching from Mississippi. Sandra said her mother had the most beautiful smile when she met her master, Lord Jesus. That makes me want to cry. I hope that I can be there when mama goes, but I don't really know if I will or not. And I know some of y'all are probably thinking, I can't believe y'all you left her. But let me just say this. Mama... Oh, I, I left her with the Pandora on C-Law. If y'all have never listened to C-Law, S-E-L-A-H, sing uh, music, uh, it's beautiful. <laughs> so I left her with that on. And, of course, my sister's been there. And they, they play, for some reason, most of the workers, she likes to listen to 70s country. But I said, please don't let my mother pass away listening to 70s country if anything happens while I'm gone. They're supposed to call me so I could get back. But... I hope I'm there, Sandra. I hope I'm blessed enough to be there. Um, Rita Popwell. She says, You've Got a Friend was written by Carol King during the January 71 recording sessions for her first own album tapestry. I'm probably saying it. I say album, and my kids have always made fun of me, and I know it's album. album? I cannot say it right. I say it like I did when I was a kid. I still say it that way. And James Taylor album, Mudslide Slim, and the Blue Horse Horizon King. And she's got more, but I can't click the button without messing up my screen. I'll read that later, but not sure that that was really about Jesus. But we, I'll, I'll go look. But it sure is who I think of when I listen to it. Marilyn Watt King, that's what Jesus wants for us to call out his name. Joy Townsend. Listen to Because You Love Me by Celine De Dion. I've always thought of God when listening to it. I'll do that, Joy. Um, now of Madison Star. Now, Denise says Madison started listening to only old hymns and nothing else. I would know she had probably done something she shouldn't have because it would be odd. <laughs> That's the truth, Denise. Isn't that the truth? If I were just to walk downstairs and one of my teenagers would be listening to an old Southern hymn, I would think that something crazy was happening. Um, after You know, that's just the way it is. Ma Marcia Taylor says, I love that song. Goosebumps. Hey, Rhonda Long. I, I, I so miss Rhonda Long. I don't know if you're still on here or not, but I really do miss you. Kathy Dubree. Rhonda... Worked for my family for years and years and years. Um, she was the she was like the office manager. She was really really smart and good and a redhead, which I loved because she was opinionated. She knew what she she wanted, just like a redhead does. And but she loved God too, and so she had a soft spot. I know I've seen it. Uh, Kathy Debris says, "Love that song. I think of Jesus too." See, I'm not the only one. Um, let's see, we got Christy Pittman, Davy Burns. Let's see. I can understand the reasoning that some might be moved by music and think they are spiritual or saved when they are not. Um, well, 
I guess uh, salvation is so complicated. Well, it's very simple, but for some it's complicated. And I say that because um, without being saved, if you're not saved, then you can never experience the joy that comes with salvation. Now, there's one thing to be happy, you know. And there's things in this world that can make you happy. And even some sin can make you happy for a short while. But nothing can give you joy but the Lord Jesus Christ. So if you've never felt like you had peace and joy in your life, true peace and contentment and joy, then you may want to read the chapter of John in the New Testament and, um, you know, read a little bit about what salvation is all about. Because if you read the chapter of John, you're going to, you should, God's going to show you whether or not uh, you're saved, I think. Um, it says, Kamisha said it took her a while to come out of legalism, praise the Lord. Yes, it's true. And some of us are stuck there. Um, and some of us will be stuck there until the day we breathe our last breath. Does it mean we're not going to go to heaven or we're not saved? Absolutely not. It just means that you've spent most of your life trying to uh, please people instead of uh, God. And there's a big difference. So anyway, I appreciate everybody that's here. And everybody that's tuned in, I was going to see if anybody tuned in late. And there's my Aunt Carolyn, who has to listen to me cry and sob and act crazy. And I was telling Carolyn, uh, this is my Aunt Carolyn, my daddy's sister. She's the only aunt, really, I got left that I talked to at all. Um, and now that's, you know, my mom is kind of dementia-wise, I like to, you know, I like to talk to an older woman. Not that Carolyn's owns the hills, but you know what I mean. Um, and I have called her lately breaking down. And it's weird because I haven't even broke down to my home husband. I, but then I'd break down with her on the phone. And I probably shouldn't because it probably worries her because she probably thinks I'm like that all the time. But I'm really not. It's just that there's nothing like when you're going through a storm or a trial or an experience. There's nothing like family. And I'm talking about and I know nobody can love me like my husband. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about family that has known you from the minute your feet hit the floor and you walk the first time. That kind of family. The kind of family that knows who you are and how you're made and how you think. And that's the kind of family that you're drawn close to when something bad is happening in your life. Uh, because it's like your home. And so... She's had to put up with me a few weeks, and I appreciate her doing that. And she has been very sweet and good to me, too. So thank you, Carolyn Sullins. And she lives out there in Collard Valley with her eggs for sale. Um, I guess I better get off here. I've been on here forever. I need to rest a minute before Chris gets home. I hope and pray y'all have a good evening. I hope you go back and listen to the study. And if you don't, just go and just turn your phone on to... You've got a friend by James Taylor. Close your eyes and think about Jesus. And it's just a wonderful experience. Y'all have a great day. And thanks for watching Real Southern Woman, where we're real and we're Southern. And we love God. Bye, y'all. Love ya.